الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له. وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله. اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وآله وصحبه. أما بعد ما دير brothers ما دير sisters ما دير children السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Today, inshallah, we'll continue our talk regarding Prophet Yusuf alayhi salatu wassalam. Last week, we stopped. Okay. In camera. Okay. Something wrong with camera. I've just been told that the last four weeks even did not record, so never mind. Okay. So let's continue our talk regarding Prophet Yusuf alayhi salatu wassalam and we stopped last week at verse 51 chapter 12 uh, the king of Egypt at that time summoned the women and the wife of the Aziz to put the wife of the Aziz ended her statement with a very interesting sentence. So listen very carefully please to what she said. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما أبرئ نفسي إن النفس لأمارة بالسوء إلا ما رحم ربي إن ربي غفور رحيم I cannot claim that I am innocent. I'm not trying to cover up what I have done. I admit my guilt. And that's why if we do anything wrong, our ego should not stop us from saying sorry. Whether it is something wrong between you and another person, your wife, your husband, your children, your boss, whoever, there is no harm in saying, I'm sorry. You admit your guilt. I'm very sorry. I didn't mean it. Or, I'm sorry, I meant it, but I'm not going to do it again. Inna nafsa l'ammaratun bissu illa ma rahima rabbi. Certainly, human soul incites evil. It's prone to evil. And if not checked and controlled, will lead to perdition. Inna nafsa l'ammaratun bissu illa ma rahima rabbi. So unless my Lord bestow his mercy on the soul, the soul will always command the person to do evil. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about three types of souls. The first one is a nafs al-ammara bisu. A person who is doing evil all the time. He enjoys doing evil all the time. He commands you so this is a feeling he is happy and satisfied that he is doing wrong. He doesn't care. And unless the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is bestowed on this soul, he will continue to do that. The second type of soul is the self-correcting one. Al-nafs al-lawama. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, La uqsimu bi yawm al-qiyama wa la uqsimu bil nafs al-lawama. I swear by the day of judgment and I swear by a self-correcting soul. Every time it does something wrong, it feels sorry. And it says to itself, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that. I'm going to stop Next time, I will resist the temptation. I'm not going to do it. So this soul is fighting evil all the time inside itself, trying to produce some sort of immunity against the temptation which we all face in our life. And this is, this is true because we are all weak. And some of us might have weakness in, in, in certain area and the other, for example, someone loves money, someone loves women, someone loves to drink, someone loves to gamble, someone loves to cheat and they say yes or to lie. So every time he does something wrong, he blames himself and he promises he will correct it. Next time he will resist the evil and he will try to be so strong. And eventually this soul becomes so strong. And then it becomes the third type of soul, which is a nafs al-mutma'inna, a content soul which reached steady state condition that whatever happens around it, whether it is bad news or good news or evil, 
this soul will always maintain its steady state condition. It will never be affected by any of these things. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyatuha nafsul mutma'inna, irji'i ila rabbiki radiyatan mardiyya, fadkhuli fi ibadi wa adkhuli jannati. O content soul, Ya ayyatuha nafsul, he scores it, Ya ayyatuha nafsul mutma'inna, irji'i ila rabbiki radiyatan mardiyya, go back to your Lord, fully satisfied and happy and content with. Enter my paradise, enter with my servants and so on. So we need to move from a soul which commands evil all the time, as the wife of the Aziz was admitting in the presence of the king, to a soul which is going to be content and always at a steady state, so no external disturbances can affect it in any way. Inna Rabbi Ghafoor Rahim, surely my Lord is oft forgiving, most merciful. When the king heard all this, he said, bring him to me. وَقَالَ الْمَلِكُ اُتُونِي بِهِ Bring him here to me. أَسْتَخْلِصُ لِنَفْسِي I'm going to make him serve me only. فَلَمَّا كَلَّمَهُ When Yusuf came and the king spoke to him, قَالَ إِنَّكَ الْيَوْمَ لَدَيْنَا مَكِينٌ أَمِينٌ إِنَّكَ الْيَوْمَ لَدَيْنَا مَكِينٌ أَمِينٌ when the king spoke to Yusuf and he saw the qualities of a great man, an honorable man, he said, today we are going to give you authority, unlimited authority from the word tamkeen. We are <laughs> going to give you a full authority to be able to do whatever you want, wherever you want. Makinun Amin is you are trustworthy, we trust you. And this is very interesting. If every ruler, <coughs> Prophet ﷺ told us that every ruler has two types of inner lining. You know, this is in Arabic called bitana, the inside of the jacket here, called bitana. So he said every ruler has two types of inner lining like this bitana. Either good ones who will advise him, the good advice, and help him and support him to do what is right and forbid him from doing what is wrong, or evil bitana, evil one, who will always advise him to do evil because they benefit out of being with this ruler, unfortunately. But this one was trustworthy. Today, you have authority and power to move anywhere and you are a trustworthy person. So Yusuf offered his services to the king and to Egypt. Appoint me to be in charge of all the storehouses in Egypt, to be the minister of treasure. Because in my CV, I have two great qualities. So he presented his CV to the king by saying, إِنِّي حَفِيظٌ عَلِيمٌ Hafiz means I'm a good keeper. I know how to look after the storage, after the reserves, after the food. Inni Hafizun Alim, I have the knowledge. So I am equipped with two great qualities. Hafiz, I'm a good keeper, and Alim, I'm knowledgeable. When Musa alayhi salatu was salam helped the two women to water their cattle, one of them said to her father in the presence of Musa, Ya abati istaghfirhu, ya abati istaghfirhu, inna khayra man istaghfirta al-qawil abid. Oh my father, employ him. The best one you can employ is al-qawil al-amin. The physically strong, the honest, the trustworthy. So, Whenever you apply for a job and you complete your CV, you must ensure that whatever the job, let's say they are asking for some. I am so powerful, I will bring it before this meeting is over, and I am so powerful, and I am also trustworthy. So whenever 
you present a CV, highlight the things which are relevant to the job you are going to apply for and make them so clear so that they attract the person who is looking for someone to do the job. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse 56, وَكَذَلِكَ مَكَّنَّا لِيُوسُفَ فِي الْأَرْضِ يَتَبَوَّأُ مِنْهَا حَيْثُ يَشَاءُ And we established or we give power to Joseph that he can do whatever he likes in the land. He can move wherever he wants without any restriction. نُصِيبُ بِرَحْمَتِنَا مَنْ نَشَاءُ Our mercy will encompass or bestowed on whom we will. وَلَا نُضِيعُ أَجَرَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ And never the good deeds of someone who does good will be wasted. No way. If you do something good, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will keep it for you. And he will reward you. Maybe today, maybe tomorrow, maybe on the day of judgment. But it will never be wasted. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made a record and this record is not going to be destroyed. Could you please move forward, everybody please? Because a lot of people are standing outside, please. Everybody to move forward, please. And remember also, this is one of the attributes of Yusuf. When he was in the prison, the two prisoners, when they approached him, they said to him, Inna naraka min al-muhsineen. We can see you are a man who is doing good all the time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here confirms this attribute by saying, Wala nudi'u ajr al-muhsineen. We will never waste the good deeds of someone who does them. So this is the reward in this life. But the reward on the day of judgment is more than the reward in this life for those who believe and fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, seven years of prosperity has gone. And Yusuf actually, according to tradition, Joseph age was barely 30 years at the time when he came out of the prison. So now Yusuf is about 37 years old. We haven't heard anything about his father or his brothers. What happened to them? Now seven years of prosperity gone, and then the famine started. Seven hard, harsh years started. So in verse 58, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, وَجَاءَ إِخْوَةُ يُوسُفَ فَدَخَلُوا عَلَيْهِ فَعَرَفَهُمْ وَهُمْ لَهُ مُنْكِرُونَ The brothers of Yusuf, excluding Benjamin, they came now to Egypt. They want to buy or to barter for grains because the famine did not only affect Egypt but affected all the countries around it. These people lived in the land of Canaan which is known to us today as Syria, Lebanon, Palestine, Jordan. All this area there is known as the land of Canaan. And it's also known as the Holy Land. So they came to barter. The way they used to do it, they would bring something and exchange it for grain. Maybe they brought woolen uh, uh, ropes or, 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 or cloaks or whatever. They brought with them and they came to barter and have grains from Yusuf He recognized them. Can you imagine how old was he when he left? Maybe seven, eight years. So 30 years later, he recognized them immediately. But they could not recognize him because they thought he was a slave who died long time ago. Now let me read this footnote regarding the status of Yusuf in Egypt. What a wonderful example of the working of divine providence. The boy whom his jealous brothers got rid of by selling him into slavery for a miserable price becomes the most trusted dignitary in a foreign land. <coughs> Chief minister in one of the greatest empires of the world of that day. And this not for himself only, but for, for his family, and for that noble example of righteousness and strenuous service, which he was to set for all time. Years pass, the times of prosperity go by, famine holds the land in its grip, 
and it extends to neighboring countries. Joseph's preparations are complete. His reserves are ample to meet the calamity. Not only does Egypt bless him, but neighboring countries send to Egypt to purchase corn. All are received with hospitality, and corn is sold to them according to Kishia's uh, measure. Now, when the brothers came, Yusuf welcomed them, and he furnished them with provisions, and he said to them, That's verse 59. When he had furnished them forth with provisions, suitable for them, he said, <laughs> Next time when you come, you must bring a brother of yours who is half-brother. He's, he's a brother from the father's side, but not from the mother's side. Can't you see how fair I am in the way I deal with weight and measures, and I am so hospitable. فَإِنْ لَمْ تَأْتُونِي بِهِ If you don't bring him, فَلَا كَيَ لَكُمْ عِنْدِي وَلَا تَقْرَبُونَ You will not have any more sustenance, you will have no more provisions, and don't come near me. وَكَذَلِكَ مَكَّنَّا لِيُوسُفَ فِي الْأَرْضِ يَتَبَوَّأُ مِنْهَا حَيْثُ يَشَاءُ shows you now the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he made use of able to control everything in the land in a fair way. We are going actually to try with our father. We are going to win him from our father or from his father and I'm sure we will do that. Because they realized if they don't bring him, there will be no more food. They cannot take any more food back home. So, قَالُوا سَنُرَاوِدُ عَنْهُ أَبَاهُ وَإِنَّ لَفَاعِلُونَ Surely, we are going to negotiate with his father. That, but when you think about how old was Benjamin? Benjamin was at least in his 30s as well. And, and the, the interesting thing here that Yusuf السلام, felt that his brother Benjamin been very badly treated by his half-brothers to the extent that even the age did not make any difference in the way they bullied him and badly treated him. <coughs> so Yusuf السلام, instructed his servants to put back into the saddles of his brothers, the saddles where they, 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 they brought the, the, their goods in, to put back the goods they brought with them and hide it in a way that they don't discover it until they go back home all the way when they open their saddles and they find their goods be returned to them. So Yusuf said, وَقَالَ لِفِتْيَانِهِ جَعَلُوا بِضَاعَةً فِي رِحَالِهِمْ He told his servant to put their stock in trade, the goods they brought for bartering, in their saddles لَعَلَّهُمْ يَعْرِفُونَهَا إِذَا انْقَلَبُوا إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِمْ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْجُعُونَ So when they go back to their people and they discover it, maybe they will come back because they already have some goods to barter with. That was a very interesting plan which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspired Yusuf to do. Yusuf didn't do it from his own initiative. So I'm going to stop here at verse 62 and next week inshallah we'll continue. We'll see what happened with the brothers of Yusuf alayhi salatu wassalam. Just to mention uh, uh, something regarding the time of prayers, the, the time of dhuhr.